What is going on? Thank you for tuning in, and I hope you're doing well. Now, we're back in the cave for another episode of Crusher's 5 Minute Finds, and today we're talking about a truly iconic vintage action figure line, but one that I've not spoken about at all on this channel before, and that's Kenner's Superpowers. And the reason I've, I've not really spoken about Kenner's Superpowers on this channel before, the reason that I'm really only just getting to it now in terms of my collecting is... Growing up, I had no nostalgic connection to Kenner Superpowers at all, for a couple of reasons. Firstly, the Superpowers line predated my childhood. The first wave of the action figures came out the year I was born, and so it wasn't really on my radar growing up. And besides that, I wasn't really super into kind of comic book and superhero properties growing up. I really do feel like, for me, wrestling kind of filled that that space in my childhood the characters the legends of the wwf in the late 80s and early 90s the hulk hogan's the ultimate warriors they were absolutely real life superheroes to me growing up and the rick flairs and the bobby heenans and the million dollar man ted DiBiase's, they were they were kind of my the, the super villains of my childhood but with that said i was definitely exposed to the characters of the dc universe growing up specifically the batman universe because I remember watching the 1966 Batman film, you know, when I was about five or six years old. I really enjoyed the 1989 Keaton Batman film. And since then, I've always kind of lent more towards DC than Marvel when I am consuming comic book franchises. And then in terms of how I got kicked off in collecting Kenner Superpowers figures, considering I didn't grow up with them, I was generously gifted this awesome Flash figure by the legends from the YouTube channel Keep On Collecting around Christmas time and that kind of set me off on the hunt for them. But like all the vintage action figure lines that I collect, I feel like when I wasn't necessarily looking out for them, when I wasn't actively collecting them, I would see them far more often than I do now, but that's just the way it goes sometimes. I've got two additions to the Superpowers collection to show you guys today, and uh, two's better than none, I'm happy with that, so let's get into it. Now, where better to start with the Kenner Superpowers line than this awesome Series 1 1984 Batman figure? A figure that, at least as far as I'm aware, is complete with his original cape. At least that was kind of how I how I ordered him on eBay. That was that was the terms of the listing. Uh, but again, far from an expert on the Kenner Superpowers line. So if anyone can correct me there, I certainly welcome that. Anyone who can share any advice or knowledge in the comments, I'm certainly all ears. But just before picking up this figure, uh, I saw the most recent Batman film, The Batman, in the cinema, and that kind of inspired me in my search to track this guy down. But in stark contrast to the latest Batman film, what I like most about this Batman figure and the superpowers line in general is we've got the classic golden age depiction of these characters. Because even though I did watch the 1966 film growing up, I more so grew up on the 89 Keaton Batman and, and all the Batman films that came after. They kind of normalized to me the depiction of Batman in all black. Whereas as far as I've, I've now come to learn, up until 1989, this is more of a prototypical depiction of how Batman looked. He wasn't in all black. He was in the grey, the blue cape, the blue mask, the yellow and black logo on the chest, which I love. And of course, Batman can't go anywhere without the bright yellow utility belt. And, uh, and it's a Kenner figure, so you know that we've got to have a squeeze leg action feature. And, and this one works beautifully. This figure is in awesome condition. Really happy to have the 1984 Series 1 Batman figure in the collection. Now, unlike Batman, the other figure I'm sharing today is based on a character that I literally know nothing about, and that is this awesome looking Martian Manhunter figure. Once again, as far as I'm aware, complete with his original cape. And looking at this figure, I literally couldn't tell you if he's a good guy or a bad guy. That's how little I know about the Kenner Superpowers line and the characters that they're based on. But just because I don't have that deep knowledge of the characters and the story and kind of that personal nostalgic connection to the line doesn't mean that I, I can't appreciate it and appreciate the artistry in it. And that word might sound like a stretch, artistry. I mean, if you're watching this, you probably find these art as well, but I 100% look at vintage action figures and think about the design choices that went into them and see them as art. And one thing that I've been thinking about lately as my collecting kind of branches out well beyond the vintage action figure lines that I grew up with or that I wanted as a kid, uh, and I start collecting lines like Mighty Max and Toxic Crusaders that had no part of my childhood. When I look at them, my opinion isn't painted by nostalgia, so I kind of appreciate them for what they are. 
and I look at the details in the sculpt and I look at the, the paint details and just see them for what they are and that is an awesome piece of art and that is absolutely the case with this Martian Manhunter figure. I love the head sculpt, I love the simplicity of the sculpt overall, love the whites in the eyes uh, and, and one thing that I just really love about the Kenner Superpowers line is the colour. When you look at a figure like this and when you look at the Kenner Superpowers line in general, it's lots of primary colours and a few secondary colours and like block colours. So it's lots, lots of blocks of green and blue and red and yellow and orange. And when all these figures are lined up against that bright yellow Hall of Justice playset, it, it really is a sight to behold and it's so unique compared to all the other vintage action figure lines out there. Now, I'm a long way away from being able to recreate that image of the whole toy line in front of that Hall of Justice. But at least with the addition of Batman and the Martian Manhunter, I'm, I'm two figures closer to that and, and I couldn't be happy to have these in the collection. But I'm sure I've hit the five minute mark by now, so I'm going to leave it there. Thanks so much for watching. Hope to hear from you in the comments as always. Let me know in the comments what you are collecting that wasn't part of your childhood, that, that you had no idea about as a kid, but you really appreciate as an adult collector. Would love to hear from you as always. Thanks again for watching and until next time, cheers.